Director Ray, I'm Javed Ali, Associate Professor of Practice uh, here since 2018, and I left FBI in 2018 to, to take this, uh, another dream job here at the University of Michigan. But thank you again for being here, and thank you for being with us earlier this morning. Um, so I've got a couple questions. The first is on the, the topic of domestic terrorism, and given the elevated threat uh, in the country over the past few years, it sort of coincides with your, your time as director, uh, and specifically on the uh, racially motivated violent extremists uh, end of the spectrum and anti-government extremists end of the spectrum. Students would like to hear your perspectives on how, in your time as director, has the FBI sort of scaled up to meet this challenge? Um, where do you think this threat is going in the future? And how can the public help, um, if at all, in the Bureau's uh, mission on this really important topic? So, um Protecting Americans from terrorist attack, both domestic and international, uh, remains the FBI's number one priority. Uh, and when it comes to domestic terrorism specifically, uh, you know, I think a lot of people, it's been on the news a lot more in the last year or so, but we elevated that to a, what we call a national threat priority all the way back in, in summer of 2019, specifically racially motivated violent extremism uh, the vast majority of which is, is people who are, are advocating the superiority of, of the white race. Um, so that started, that's all the way back to summer of 2019, and we actually had a significant growth in domestic terrorism cases throughout my first three years, so 2017 to 2020. Uh, it grew quite significantly. Then, of course, you have January 6th. Uh, and obviously the numbers since then are, are even greater. Um, we have since, you mentioned two categories, there's the racially motivated violent extremism, then we have anti-government, anti-authority violent extremism. That too now is also uh, at a national highest level threat priority on the same footing as something like ISIS. Um, uh, what all these threats have in common uh, especially if you consider that I was you know, just talking a lot about 9-11, it, it helps to understand both what the threat is, but also how, to your question, how the public can help. You know, the 9-11 attack, you're talking about like a sleeper cell in effect, 19 people plus some others uh, who plotted some spectacular attack that was incredibly complicated over years. Um, what we have now is more and more people who are lone actors or maybe at the at most working with one or two other people and they're not doing some spectacular attack they're using an easily accessible weapon like a gun a knife a car a crude ied you could find out how to build on the internet uh, and they're attacking not the world trade center with a you know with a commercial airliner they're attacking what, what the intelligence community calls soft targets which is basically just jargon for everyday people living their everyday lives. And these are people who are radicalizing not in some cave in Afghanistan, they're radicalizing online. And the reason I say all that is because they go from radicalization to mobilization, not over years, but in weeks. And so you've all heard that expression about connecting the dots, the importance of connecting the dots. Well, the kind of terrorist threat we're dealing with now, especially here in, in the U.S., there are not a lot of dots. There's not a lot of people involved, not a lot of planning involved. So every dot in that situation becomes that much more important. And so it could be that the FBI only has one dot and some member of the public has the other dot. They saw something uh, about a friend, a coworker, a neighbor, something that they knew was off. Uh, or it could be a business. Some guy comes in and wants to buy a whole lot of fertilizer and ball bearings and doesn't seem to know anything about farming. We want the guy at the hardware store to say, eh, it seems odd, and calling law enforcement. Or some guy who's a, you know, seems to be a tourist, but the only thing he wants to take pictures of are like the, the undergirding of a bridge. That's weird, right? So you all heard that expression, if you see something, say something. We need people not just to see something like a bag that's left unattended in the bus terminal. If you see something about somebody, 
either in the kind of examples I just gave or because so much of this is happening online, if you see something about somebody online, to, to call law enforcement. Uh, that's how we make sure we've got the eyes and ears to make sure that we connect the dots because there's a lot fewer dots and there's a lot less time in which to connect them.